And if it, where are you today and why are you there? Morning, Eamon. I'm actually speaking to you this morning from Castleford, where our town centre is being hit, just like many right across the country. Uh, later today, we're going to be in Stockton and talking to uh, residents, talking to shoppers there about the real ways in which our high streets have been hit. As you said, we've had, you know, banks close, banks pull out of town centres completely. So there's nowhere for people to, for small businesses to be able to take their cash. We've seen shops be boarded up, small businesses under real pressure, and also a complete absence of local police. The community patrols we used to see all gone. Massive increase in shoplifting, a big increase in attacks on shop workers, big increase in criminal damage in our town centres. So then shoppers don't feel safe and they stay away. This is not on. It's really damaging to the heart of our communities. And that's why Labour is setting out a plan to scrap and replace business rates, to get banking hubs in our towns and to get neighbourhood police patrols back in our town centres so they feel safe again. And how are you going to scrap the business rates? What are you going to replace them with? So the idea is to replace the business rates with a much fairer system of business taxation that actually has a proper level playing field between the shops that we see, but also the online businesses that currently you've got online giants that as a result don't pay their fair share. And that means you've not got a level playing field that those high street shops that we want to support end up being penalised. And that's why we have to have a new system in place. Of course, we'll need to consult on that and Rachel Rees will be our Labour shadow chancellor, will be leading that process. But we have been clear, we just have to end this failing system of business rates that's hitting our town centres so hard. I think that is real politics because that is real life that you're talking about. And I often, I look at this and I think nobody cares. Nobody cares if the local optician uh, is forced out of business to be replaced by a Tesco Express. It's always the big, the big companies get in their boots and Tesco and, and whoever else it happens to be. And the small independent traders, no one cares, no one's there acting for them, greedy landlords. So we've got all that, we get all that picture there. But economically, um, I can see that what this does to your heart and your soul and the way you view your locality. But business-wise as well, does it cost the economy what's happening? I think it really does. And, and you know, I, mean, I think people do care. I think people do care if they lose their local shops, local businesses. And, you know, we just know in the heart of our towns, we've got the local market traders, the local small businesses, they're the people who are actively involved in the local high street. Actually, people often very often want small supermarkets in their town centres and so on as well. That is really important. And, you know, all of us need to be able to go to supermarkets as well. But you're right that those small businesses, that can be really what drives the local economy and yeah. it's about both the local economy yeah, I, and I think, I think you're right about people caring absolutely agree people care I'm not sure that politicians care or they can care local councils for example um, parking is a massive issue that I think you have to tackle in the that all all that you're doing here as well and I think rather than employ parking uh, wardens, people who prevent parking happening. There should be parking facilitators. There should be people on the street saying, right, Mrs Cooper, in here, if you, I can give you 15 minutes here, as long as you're out in 15 minutes and da, 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 and they find a space for you and the street moves on. And a friendliness instead of a hostility, you're not welcome here, you can't park here, don't get out here. That's, that's what I think. Well, you definitely want people to feel welcome in the town centres, but that's one of the reasons we're pushing for 13,000 more neighbourhood police across the country, including guaranteed town centre patrols, because actually one of the things that is keeping people away and that means that town centres don't feel friendly is if you've got uh, anti-social behaviour, persistent problems, or if you have shoplifters repeatedly getting away with it because it's often being driven by organised crime, this 30% yeah. increase just in the space of a year in shoplifting and people just getting away with it time and again yeah. because there aren't the neighbourhood police there. So, so I actually think that's about making people feel safe and friendly and it being welcoming in our you town centres as well. problem keeping people out of uh, the town centre as well, uh, a Labour policy here in London. But I want to talk to you about a couple of landmark um, decisions that have been made in the 
the last 24 hours. First of all, this one that's come out of the ECHR yesterday, uh, which will have an impact here uh, on our own laws in this country. It's almost like the Brexit argument again. Should foreign judges have jurisdiction over our laws? This is all about climate change. Now people can use human rights laws to say, hang on a minute, the government has failed me and they're not reaching our net zero targets. Do you think it's time to pull out of the ECHR? Well, no, the thing is, look, the, the Tories will always do this. They always would look for something else to blame and something else to distract from their chaos. And, you know, it's not the ECHR that means we've got a crisis in our NHS or that we've got real problems with energy bills shooting through the roof and not being but brought down, which reach. is part of tackling climate change. So, you know, that's they're just sort of looking for something else to blame. The thing about the ECHR is that it's part of the Good Friday Agreement, and we need to maintain the Good Friday Agreement and the peace settlement that was reached many years ago and that needs to be maintained. And it's just about having proper international standards we expect all countries to meet. But I think very often this is used as a distraction from the real problems, which is, you know, look, let's get our economy go growing properly again. Let's tackle the cost of living crisis. Let's tackle the crisis in our NHS, all things that Labour wants to yeah. do that frankly the toys are failing all to right. do time. Yeah. And very briefly, because I know you have to go, but you mentioned the NHS there, and I just want to ask you about this landmark CAS review, which has showed that a generation of children, thousands of them, have been let down in the way they've been treated for, for gender crises that they've been facing. Do you think that there need to be serious questions asked in many cases of these activist organisations that have heaped pressure on parents, on the NHS, and indeed on children? And if so, what can be done about it? Well, I think this is a really important report, the CAS report. I really welcome it. And Labour accepts all of the recommendations. We think they need to be implemented as rapidly as possible. Children and young people have been badly let down. That is what the report finds, because the support for young people has not been based on evidence. It, and it's really important when you've got children and young people's welfare, there has to be proper evidence-based you know, support. There has already been changes made around things like puberty blockers, but we need to make sure that we go further and actually implement the findings of the CAS report. It's, it's a really serious, thoughtful report, and I hope the government will now implement it as rapidly as possible.